See if we can put your expertise to, uh, to some better use with our, our callers today. Who's on the line, please, Corinne? First up, we've got Vicky from Stoke on Trent on line two. Morning, Vicky. Good morning. What's up with you? Oh, well, it's actually my son. He's 21 oh, yeah. months old now. Yeah. Uh, he's had a cough for about the last six months. Right. Wow, okay. And he keeps getting ear infections as well. Uh, the doctor's had a simple link to it, and he's given him a ventilator inhaler. Um, but it doesn't actually seem to help. Right. Okay, six months seems a long time, although I'm rapidly catching up with him. <laughs> that um, is quite a long time to actually ha have a cough for. I mean, you start to think, particularly with children, I mean, there are lots of coughs and colds going around, so it could just be something simple. But then you start to wa wonder whether there's an underlying cause. I think that's mm. why the Ventolin is there. You know, is, is, this an, is this early asthma? Is, is it an allergy? Uh, and you have to start thinking of some of those other things. Okay, I mean, anything else that Vicky could talk to her GP about? I, I think it's just going back to the GP. I know it's, it's frustrating. Um, but, uh, you know, they can run some tests and just see that, that generally your, your son's in good health uh, and make sure there aren't any, any, any sort of underlying conditions, really. It's very difficult. It is very difficult. But so staying in touch viruses, with... viruses, they take a long time to disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, I've been struggling for about a month now. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I feel fine, but it's just obviously the last bit doesn't go. Uh, if I had a 21-month-old, I might be slightly more yeah. concerned. So just staying in touch with the GP. Keep in touch with the DP GP. Okay, there we go, Vicky. So we can't be much more help than that. Hope he gets better soon, I really do. Uh, let's have another caller, please. Christine's next from Newcastle on line one. Morning, Christine. Hi. Hi there. Uh, Dr. Catherine's here. How can she help you? Um, for a year or so, I've been basically getting a period every fortnight. Um, I've been to my doctor, I've tested my hormones, it says I'm fine. But this last eight, nine weeks, it's got really bad. Um, it's lasting basically a week. Um, if I have sex with my husband, I bleed after that. I cough too hard, I bleed. It's just getting ridiculous. Um, I just want to suggest, you know, what I could do. How, can I ask how old you are, Christine? I'm 38. You're 38? Okay. And are you taking any hormones at all? No, uh, nothing. Not on any contraception or anything? No. Okay. I mean, bleeding after sex can occur. I mean, there's several things you need to, to get your GP to check out. Uh, the first one is that you need them to probably examine you or go somewhere they will examine you and have a look at the cervix. Because uh, sometimes you can get um, uh, changes to the, the, the top of the cervix which can bleed after sex. But it sounds like you're having, you know, your, pe your periods are sort of out of kilter. Mm. And this can happen as you get a bit older. Um, the other thing that if you're getting a lot of bleeding is you, is you, you check your smear test is okay and make sure you're up to date with those. And maybe have another couple of tests for maybe some infections that can, that can cause bleeding as well. Um, and you can ask your GP to do those for you. Uh, and, and then, you know, if it does sort of persist, maybe that your GP will need to look... <coughs> Do a scan, just have a look in the um, uterus. As you get older, you know, women can get fibroids, which are sort of benign growths that occur in the wall of the uterus, and that can cause bleeding too. So, several things to be checking out. Okay, and, and pursue your GP for a full examination yeah. seems to yeah. be... Uh, yeah, the, you have the, the an the examination done, yeah. When you said uh, about the irregular periods mm. can happen as you get older, are you implying that this could be edging towards the menopause? Is that possible? Quite, 38 I mean, it's very is young, quite early to go through the menopause. Most people go through the menopause in their early 50s, but it really depends on, you know, often when your mum went through it. Yeah. So it's worth asking your mum if you, you know, if they went through an early menopause, there is a chance you will too. And is this one of the symptoms that it, that it may be coming irregular on? Irregular periods, yeah. Right. But there are other things that can do that too, uh, such as changes to the lining of the uterus, um, either little polyps or, as I say, fibroids, okay. or sometimes the ovaries if they're getting cysts and things, okay. so okay. worth checking. God, I'm glad I'm a bloke. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say. Um, good luck to you, and who's our next caller, please? Next, we've got Annie from London on line three. Morning, Annie. Good morning, Matthew. H how are you? Uh, I'm fine. Good. And why are you on the phone? Better for seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, what do you want to speak to Catherine about, Annie? I I'd like to know why... And what does it mean, maybe I should shut up, I get numbness in my mouth, right. in my gums, even the teeth seem to go numb, and part of my tongue. And part of your hand? And on my hand I get tingling, okay. terrible tingling in my tongue, hand. Tongue, mouth, and, and hand. But the hand isn't the same as the mouth. No, no. What's, what's okay. the hand like? Well, the hand is pins and needles. Pins and needles. I hold a needle and I'm sewing... I get now my yeah. put the needle down. If so I'm sitting in the, new, in, in, in the underground reading the newspaper, my hands go pins and needles. Okay, so, and uh, can I ask how old you are, Annie? Uh, <laughs> well, roughly. 58. 58? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Are, are you otherwise in good health, Annie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, well, apart from bad knees. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> ask a stupid yeah. question, Catherine. Uh, <laughs> I mean, generally speaking, tingling, particularly in the hands or pins and needles, will tend to suggest that you have, uh, you're either compressing a nerve that goes to your hands or, or some of the blood vessels. So there tends to be, there's obviously something pressing that's on a nerve that's causing that tingling to occur. So uh, the first thing is to think about posture, to think about the joints, think about um, if there's anything up in the neck that, that could be impinging on, on any, um, uh, any of your nerves. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, is making, you eat a, make sure you eat a healthy diet and that kind of thing. I mean, there are rare causes of sort of numbness. Is there any um, connection, do you think, between, uh, between the sort of uh, the numbness in the mouth and tongue and, and the tingling on the hands? Well, it depends. Without examining, you know, there are, it's, it's, the nerves all come out of the back of the neck. And so some of them can get uh, sort of, you can get impingements that can affect different parts of right. the body. Yeah, definitely. So, a trip to the GP? I would go to the GP and get them just to examine you and just reassure you, really. Okay, if it was, just out of interest, if it was for any that the, the nerves were trapped, is this something that can be put right quite easily? Uh, yeah, sometimes just uh, sort of physiotherapy and um, uh, just making, you know, increasing your posture, making sure you don't you sit Freeing in the right way, up, and particularly yeah. if, you, if you are sewing. I think you said you sew, Annie? Is that, yeah, yeah, yeah you kind of often get into quite a bad posture sometimes okay. if you're doing that, so it might okay. help. Uh, off to the GP with you, Annie. Make the call now, okay? <laughs> All right, bless. Uh, let's have another one, please, Karen. Let's go to Gemma now from South Wales on line four. And what's up with you, Gemma? Good morning. Morning. Um, one year, about uh, three years ago, I switched disc in my back. Um, and for the past five, six months, I've been getting pain in my right leg. Um, it's going numb, and I was told it was a damaged nerve, but my doctor doesn't seem to be doing enough. I'm in quite a lot of pain for most of the day. Okay. And is that, is, whereabouts in your leg is that pain, Gemma? Is it at the front or the back? It's at the back. Yeah. Uh, does it go down into your heel? Um, it doesn't. It goes sort of into my bottom, <laughs> up my back again. Right. I mean, that, that sounds like it could be a nerve, nerve pain on neuritis. I mean, a classic sciatica goes from the back right down, and that's quite common when people have had a, a, a slipped disc in their lower back, so they get this shooting What's pain. What's the sciatica's shooting pains? Yeah, that will tend to go back down the, the back and down into the foot sometimes. It can go all the way down. Okay, yeah. and do you think it's possible there's a relationship between the slipped disc and, and this kind of... Uh, it could be, uh, that, yeah, because obviously we, you've obviously got some damage to your back. Um, and, uh, you know, once you've had a, a, an injury like that, it is possible for it to come back again. Uh, I, would, well, I would probably go see a GP and, and see if they can send you to um, see a physiotherapist and see if you can actually, through some exercises, get it better again yeah. if it's not settling. Okay. And in the meantime, in terms of painkillers, uh, what would you...? Uh, painkillers, uh, some of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, so that seems like uh, ibuprofen yeah. are quite good. Obviously, you have to make sure with ibuprofen that you can take it, that you've got no heart problems as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> We've had that before. There's a catch with everything, <laughs> isn't there? Yeah. But let's start with simple things like that. Okay. Uh, lovely. Thank you very much uh, for Pleasure. that. And uh, good luck to you, Gemma, I have to say. I feel for you, I really do. Uh, look, time's running on, uh, which means uh, no more calls uh, for Catherine for now, I'm afraid. But we